We could buy milk, but buying milk uh, on pasture-raised cows that's clean and I know what the history on it is, is way more expensive than I can afford. And I like having the animals. I'm Hannah Bushhouse and these are my kids, Naomi with the black fly, Nathaniel and Abby. And we do have a family cow so that, that way we have our own milk that we drink and make cheese and enjoy having. She's a Jersey looking object. We have no idea what her history is, although she's very Jersey looking and there are a couple Jersey farms close to where she came from and she had been milked before. She had a sweet disposition in the first place, but it took some training to get her to milk by hand for us. Part of it was I think her just getting used to me and I wasn't milking her in the same spot every time because I didn't have the barn fully set up. But she settled in and she wasn't, she wouldn't kick, which some cows just kick and kick and kick and she doesn't. I didn't get her with a calf so I had to milk, so I think when we first got her I was milking three or four times a day just to try to keep her from getting mastitis. Um, but once we settled out then we caught it back down to twice a day and that was more manageable. If you want to get a cow you might as well try it. Uh, I could always sell her back for hamburger if it didn't work. I can't sell her calves for as much, but really for a family milk cow, you're going for temperament and for high cream. And for temperament and high cream, she's fine. She's quite gentle with them. I mean, when she has a new calf, she'll headbutt, but she doesn't have any horns and her heifers haven't had any horns, which is a lot safer. You can get ones that are naturally born without horns. They're called pulled. Some people keep them, but even super gentle cows with horns are pointy objects on a very large, strong animal. When I began, I had to work on having my hand really up into the teeth so that all the milk came out, not just like half, and having fast enough reflexes that when the cow like lifts up the foot and tip over the milk bucket and then waste all the time. Because she's nice and you can milk and you don't have to be worried that she's just gonna like surprise kick you in the face. If I take the calves off between milkings, I get two or three gallons in the morning, um, but then I leave the calves on, and so that way I only have to milk once a day, and if I leave the calf on, then I only get about a gallon. So basically a barn storage for the winter, some sort of shelter for the summer, like our cows are out at night now just because the black flies, or not the black flies, but the big deer flies, really bother them right in the middle of the day when it's hot, and they really bite the teats, and the cows don't enjoy it, whereas overnight it's just mosquitoes. They don't enjoy them either, but <laughs> they aren't quite as bad. And then we use electric fence for the cows. I have three strands right now. Um, the top strand really is for the horses. The bottom, bottom, bottom strand is for the calves, and then the middle strand is the main strand for being hot enough to keep the cows, the big cows in. If you have a hose and a hose spigot, you're good. In the winter we fill barrels, um, just because the lines freeze if you leave the water going all the time. We feed hay. We figure one round bale per month. Basically I feed four bales at once and then the cows and the horses free feed so it's four animals and four bales. And that seems to be about right for us at the moment. Um, it depends on the quality of the hay though. If it's not as nice hay, then they'll pick through it and waste more of it. If it's nice hay, then if it's really nice hay, they'll eat it too fast and then get really fat. <laughs> um, we fed silage for a little bit this winter, or haylage, I guess. Um, but the milk doesn't taste quite as nice and the cheese isn't as good. And then there's always the awkward transition between hay and grass that must mess up their bacterial rumen or something because the milk will taste bad for a couple of weeks just as you change the feed. Well, I mean, at some point that's too much for the ducks and chickens, but yes, no, we try not to waste it. Yeah. The butter, 
I still make decent butter. So I still skim the cream off and make butter. And then when I'm frying or baking with it, the taste is fine. But we wouldn't use it necessarily for fresh butter on toast. I don't think you have to have any pasture if you're going to feed hay. The big dairies, the, the milking cows never go, never go out. It really depends on the quality of your pasture. I think we have about five acres of open pasture and we could probably do two cows on that. Um, but we also mow it at least once a year just to keep the weeds that they don't like eating down because otherwise if you overgraze it, they'll only eat the things that they like and then you'll eventually only have the things that they don't like or can't eat. And that's not an efficient way of using space. Um, they will browse, so we have a fair bit of space in and amongst and under trees. And that also seems to give them a fair bit of shelter. Like the nasty deer flies and such won't go into the really heavy spruce thickets. And that gives them a natural barn, if you would, for the summer. I do still pasteurize most of our milk for drinking just because we've got little kids and I want it to, if I'm going to drink it, I want it to store for a while. But I just take that up. There are th three different pasteurization techniques. The easiest one and the one that they use for cheese is to take it up to 145 and hold it there for half an hour. And with a big pot, typically it will maintain itself. How do you know that the cow's in heat? They start just being bad bit to gain more often. <laughs> and if you have two cows, they'll start jumping on each other. <laughs> it's a good reason to have two cows. You know when they're in heat. <laughs> we'll look at the cream content of all of the bulls that he has available and we choose for cream first and then um, look at any of the confirmation tra traits that we want to improve. Like I wanted the rear teats more spaced on the calf. Um, we're not breeding for show, so size, overall cow size isn't as big of a deal for us. Um, and our cows, because they're out at pasture, their legs tend to hold up better than if they're just standing in a barn all the time. So that's what we've been choosing for at this point. You can, it's not 100%. <laughs> we have, um, this year our calves are a heifer from the unsex semen and a bull calf from the sex semen. <laughs> so yes, Taco Bell was supposed to be a she. Yes. In this case it was maybe, I don't know, five or $10 more for the chance of having, I think it's a 95 or 90 or 95% chance that it'll be a girl. Um, somewhere in the 30 to $50 range for semen. Uh, one, we have another family that wants a milk cow. Clarabelle will be going to them in the fall when we're ready to go into the barn. And then Taco Bell will go to the freezer. We've tried to be pretty clear on naming like the pigs and things when we have them. So when they have the meat cows or the meat pigs, we spend enough time with them that we can get them on the trailer for the butcher, but we don't play with them and brush them and give them a lot of other attention. I think you just have to try it. If you can find someone who would let you milk once a week on their cow, that would probably be ideal because it would give them a break and give you the chance to try having that much milk and see if you like it. I had a lot of large animal experience, like not with cows, but with horses and sheep and things. But if you don't, I would say get a mentor and see if you ha can milk and see if you like handling cows. Because you don't want to pay a whole bunch for an animal, especially a milk cow, if you aren't going to be able to either resell it for meat or milk it because if you don't milk them, they get sick, and then they're, they're miserable, you're miserable. I mean, cows will be cows, and they're fairly, they're a little safer. I'd say that they're safer than horses, because they don't tend to spook as badly. But they're still a large 1,000-pound animal that can do a lot of damage if you don't put yourself in the right spot and handle them safely.